today we eat gibber snacks. Canned fish has been a classic meal for at least the last century and a half. A meal fit for a king according to King Oscar. I feel it is a true statement, but most likely only for a fisher king. Growing up, I had a general liking for fish, specifically salmon. Being my dad worked on a fishing boat for a period of time and would occasionally make a salmon stew with some of the catch. A very tangy and rich meal for sure and probably fed my love of soups. My mother was also a fan of canned sardines and the infamous anchovy pizza. As a kid, I didn't find the anchovy pizza appealing and in fact find it quite gross. However, as an adult, I find the little salty guys to be one of those flavors that I don't have often, but when I do, it's easy to appreciate. Anchovies are the Vegemite of the sea, of course. As for sardines, we had a weird relationship. I started off liking them. The oily texture of plain ones was simply that classic fish taste. Adding a small amount of hot sauce and throw one of those bad boys in a cracker and you've got yourself a way to eat hot sauce with a chunk of something under it. Side note, there are definitely sardines with hot sauce nowadays, probably with sriracha too, go figure. Even teeny bones in sardines have an interesting mouthfeel. It's what I would imagine eating little teeth would be like. As a tween, one tragic day I noticed a fin inside the tin, and I decided I am Sam and I am, and I will not eat fish fins out of tins. Yeah, well, uh, until maybe my 20s when I realized I didn't care that much about fins and skins and sometimes eyeballs or the whole goddamn fish for that matter. Fish in general is a delicacy I greatly enjoy nowadays, both cooked and raw. There's something satisfying about smoking some fish over a campfire by river or gently baking a side of salmon. However, today we'll be focusing on this specific can of fish. These here, kipper snacks. These are a treat I realized I liked quite a bit when I did construction a few years ago. A light snack, generous on protein, omega-3s, with a strong but enjoyable flavor that can be lugged around in a toolbox, a coat pocket, or drug around behind you on a string. Yes. This is the power of canning things. Preserved fish, generally speaking, has been one of the foods of all time. Far as I know, salting and smoking meats and vegetables has been around for thousands of years, mostly as a method to increase shelf life of meats. Though, over time, despite having many food storage methods these days, many people still enjoy a can of mackerel or dehydrated fruits. Well, I'll use the word enjoy real lightly on that can of mackerel. I didn't know much about the history of fish as a food until I read this book about cod. No, not that cod. Cod, a biography of fish that changed the world by Mark Kurlansky. Kurlansky? I am not doing my due diligence here. Went on about the historical, economic, and environmental significance of the fish. Here's an excerpt from the book. The first draw of the Caribbean for New Englanders was the salt from the Tortugas, but soon ships were coming back with not only salt, but indigo, cotton, tobacco, and sugar. Only 25 years after the Pilgrims first landed, New Englanders were doing a triangulated trade. The best fish was always sold in Spain. Bilboa, with its wine, fruit, iron, and coal, became a major trading partner with Boston. The New Englanders then sailed to the West Indies, where some Spanish goods along with the cheapest cod were sold, and sugar, molasses, tobacco, cotton, and salt were bought. The ship would return to Boston with Mediterranean and Caribbean goods. They had made money at every stop very quickly. The next commercially logical step was taken. In 1645, a New England ship took pipe to the Canaries, then bought African slaves to the Cape Verde Islands, and sold them in Barbados, returning to Boston with wine, sugar, salt, and tobacco. Shipments of salt cod followed, and soon salt cod, slaves, and molasses became commercially linked. That book was eight hours of reading on the most esoteric knowledge published over two decades ago about a topic I don't think I'll ever do anything with. Being I live in the middle of a country thousands of miles from the nearest ocean, and probably even more thousands of miles from the nearest cod, I will bask in the fact that I'm not even about to eat cod. Because kipper snacks are herring. I hope nobody read too much into that info about cod, which, by the way, is a delicious flaky white meat fish. Now, not to go too far off into the weeds, I shall return to the task at hand. <laughs> What we have here are kipper snacks and entertainment crackers. It's a fairly simple task. I want to put the fish on the cracker and then eat it. I'd say that's in the top 10 ways to eat canned fish. The fish is in a tin inside a box. I think the box is unnecessary, but probably exists for shipping reasons. 
Fortunately for me, like every canned fish except for tuna, this comes with an easy pull tab, making access and to- And it's broke. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Never fear, we don't give up here. Although I feel like the chances of this happening are rare. This is like the one pull tab I've messed up in five years. Imagine if I'd been stranded in the middle of nowhere, miles from the nearest can opener, and this was my last meal before I'd needed to tape up all the broken glass shooter bottles to fight off a pack of gray wolves in the Alaskan wilderness. Gee whiz, that would stink. Trying to shove the key back on isn't working. Maybe I'll just jab metal with a plastic spoon? That could do it. No. You know what? I think it's time for a different key. There is a strange grief that comes with being almost prepared to do something. When things go wrong enough, you can move forward, but not right enough where you're forced to get creative or suffer. That could mean driving back home for a can opener, or taking the bottle opener that you strangely have on your truck keys to open up a can of worms. Only to find that it doesn't work, so now you're just using the key to open the tin. It's kind of fun, because it's still a key being used to open what is functionally a food door. Oh, yeah. Herring has a solid flavor, especially smoked in my opinion. I've heard the saltiness likened to that of bacon, which I agree with. It is pretty salty, but not overbearing. If you like fish, this is a god tier as far as ready to eat long storage food goes. In contrast, I personally find canned tuna to be mid, unless you put a lot of work into it, like adding a bunch of sauces and fresh vegetables and seasonings to turn a relatively bland food into something craveable to anyone besides a house cat. As far as I know, kipper snacks are actually a common breakfast staple in a few countries, though reportedly less so in modern times. I myself have had them for breakfast with eggs, or on top of a ramen square for lunch. I'd say the kind of insane thing about food in general is the amount of stuff that's not from where you are that impressively gets to make a journey across the world to eventually end up on your table. Understand that shipping things across the world has been a relatively normal thing for centuries for sure, but the novel aspect of being able to try them is another thing. It's a cool luxury and learning experience to get to taste something of someone else's life. I do like to imagine some fisherman in Norway catching his billionth load of herring and sighing because he's tired of eating the animal. Well, one of his compatriots revels in the fact that they get to catch and consume these darlings ad nauseum. I find that most of the time, the reason I find myself trying things, specifically new things, anymore is because someone suggests it or offers it. Very rarely is it an experience just arbitrarily throwing some random schlock off the shelves in a grocery store into my cart and testing it out of my own volition of the self, or maybe just grabbing a random bug off the sidewalk and munching on it for the sake of curiosity. Granted, there's so much, and maybe too much, to fear eating strange new things. Maybe I'll eat something poisonous. What if it tastes bad? What if I suffer the revenge of Montezuma? What if I like it so much I spend half my paycheck consuming it and eventually have to go to rehab for isopod consumption addiction? Realistically, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just stalling. The herring tastes good. If you like fish, you should try it. If you don't like fish, you should try it and be ready to get sick. I'm like 43% sure there's a currently an entire genre of eating canned fish on YouTube, for sure on TikTok. I personally find it funny. I will limit my fish consumption. I don't want to get mercury poisoning. Which, you know what? I was confused on how the mercury got into the fish, and after reading about it, I've got to go. Bye. Have a good day. Oh, it's the homie Cherbaca.